G'day everyone and welcome to the Eternal Gathering. This is a gather again with another Piney deck tech for you. Today uh, we are doing a deck that I've named Death Card, uh, which is a Galgari deck uh, that wants to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with your opponent and basically out-resource them to win in the end. Now, the whole premise of this deck is uh, having Death Touch creatures. A lot of those, those creatures in the deck have Death Touch. Uh, as well as uh, discarding your opponent's hand uh, through cards like Thought Seize and a lot of removal spells uh, to get rid of all the creatures that may be in your way if your Death Touch creatures cannot get through them. So, for this deck, uh, it is a deck that a little bit uh, more pricier than other decks, uh, $500 in paper, but it does uh, play quite a good package uh, that you could probably utilize for going into Sultai Delirium if uh, if you want to go to that towards that deck but overall this deck uh, packs some punch with a lot of really high T kind of planeswalkers and creatures uh, as well as removal spells so we'll go with creatures first as usual and we got here three Knight of the Ebon Legion a one mana one two Vampire Knight that you can pay 2 in a black to make it gain death touch and plus 3 plus 3 until end of turn. And then at the beginning of your end step, if a player lost 4 or more life this turn, you have to put plus and plus one counter on Knight of Ebon Legion. That is your 1 drop along with uh, Nana and Renegade, which is a 1 2 for 1 with death touch and revolt if a uh, permanent has left the battlefield from your uh, control. Uh, this turn, you get to put in play with a plus and plus one counter. So, uh, these are the one drops. They're basically in there because uh, Rana Renegade is a good 1 2 death touch creature that you can sometimes put into play as a 2 3, which can be relevant at times. And not only Legion is just a really good card overall, uh, especially if you're going really aggressive, which is this deck can do. It can get quite aggressive, and you can try and uh, punch through the extra damage by pumping it up if it gets unblocked or if it gets blocked by a strong creature. Uh, therefore, being giving it Death Touch to be able to kill that creature. We've got Gifted Ether Bomb, which has Death Touch and Life Link. Uh, two black for two three. A very very relevant uh, kind of stats there with the Death Touch and Life Link, keeping you in the game against the um, the burn decks in the format. Uh, it also works well in conjunction with Bloodthirsty Aerialist, which we have two of, uh, which gets plus plus counter kind of whenever you gain life, so you can pump. Your bloodthirsty areas, your bloodthirsty areas, aerialist, sorry, is uh, your only flying creature in the deck. Uh, basically, I wanted something that could block flyers, uh, but also was another uh, threat with some invasion that could get through uh, your opponent. Time Striker is there to uh, get some extra, uh, I guess, card advantage throughout the, the game. Uh, obviously, it uh, works well with your. Uh, lands coming into play. Now there's no fetching lands uh, that you can utilize in Piney that's really effective apart from maybe Fable Passage but this deck I really leaned heavily on uh, the, the uh, I guess dual lands utilizing 4 Blue Marsh to Hissing Quagmire for extra uh, creatures that you can use Overgrown Tomb and Woodland Cemetery uh, try to get that because there's a lot of double colors in this deck like double black double green as you can see So uh, Tile Striker still works quite well can get quite big out of control uh, You are you do end up drawing a lot of cards with this deck Going to your Lord of Luxury uh, Another card with Death Touch and another way to get extra card advantage uh, in a fun way as well um, It's still quite a, a quite a good card quite a good kind of two for one there um, because when he does die, you still get to utilize the card that you exiled from your opponent's uh, library. It uh, doesn't matter if Gonti has died, you can still utilize that card. So it just gives you an extra card in your hand. It can be random, obviously getting any card from your opponent. You don't know what kind of cards they have uh, typically, but typically you will get something uh, that is of value and that you can utilize and obviously giving your mana the ability to tap for any color to utilize that card that you get. Kalita's Trade of Get, another good card to have in a deck, lifelink relevant as well, um, but 
being able to exile creatures uh, that your opponents have the die whilst he is out, um, as well as giving you a 2 2 black zombie, uh, is very relevant and can win you games by himself. Questing Beast, a way to also punch through any, like, I guess, weenie decks that it might be in the format, as well as getting rid of the planeswalkers that you might come across. Also, having Death Touch um, as its key, uh, I guess, ability there uh, to. to kind of put it in this deck. Um, most of these cards, as you can see, did have Death Touch. Liliana, The Last Hope, got two of, uh, and three Nissa Voices. And you got Liliana, The Last Hope, uh, just good at getting rid of some creatures. Also bringing back creatures that you might have uh, lost that you need to kind of like continue remaining in the game if need be. Uh, but you're trying to usually just plus one and get to that ultimate to win the game. Nissa Voices, Enika, Getting you some uh, fodder, fodder creatures to defend with, uh, but also the minus two is very relevant. Being able to put plus and plus and counters on each of your creatures that you control, uh, especially if you have a lot of tokens on battlefield, um, you can just pump them up. And very relevant uh, minus two ability there. Um, very good planeswalker overall. Um, really nice to get any of these uh, in the game and, and, and keep them alive for eternal two. Then we go for spells. A lot of spells to, to destroy uh, permanents or creatures. We got three Fatal Pushes, uh, three Abrupt Decays, three Assassin's Trophy, and two Murderous Cut. Delve, really good ability. Murderous Cut can destroy any creature, but usually play it for one or two mana. So it's it's a really good card to, to put in. Uh, and then we got four Thought Seizers uh, for the early game to, to remove key pieces. Now, in terms of the sideboard, um, I've gone with two dresses in a sideboard, uh, so bring these guys in if you have a deck that you really want to like get rid of some key cards uh, from your opponent. Um, we got Return to Nature, destroying artifacts or enchantments, and also exiling cards from graveyard. Really good uh, modal kind of component there from Return to Nature. Noxious Graps to get rid of uh, to Fairy, which is really annoying. Uh, the three fairy, uh, as well as just any other control decks that uh, have creatures or uh, planeswalkers that are very difficult to otherwise um, get rid of. Back to nature, I've got destroying all enchantments uh, that that are uh, auras deck that is in the format at the moment. Uh, the ores of one, uh, this can really hurt them getting rid of creatures uh, as well as the enchantments themselves. Uh, so very good card to have in your uh, sideboard. Pithy Needle, again great against any Planeswalkers um, as well as any other uh, creatures or permanents really that have those activated abilities that, that you just don't really have an answer to otherwise um, if you don't get your Assassin's Trophy usually. Grafdigger's Cage and Torment's Crypt to round out the sideboards uh, against any of the graveyard decks that might be in the format. Uh, I think about like the Breach decks, Underworld Breach. So that is the deck itself. Uh, I've tested it a couple of times in tournaments. Um, it is very good, obviously, against creature heavy decks uh, in the format. Uh, it, it can these games can go for quite some time, so you are uh, not really finishing off your deck, uh, finishing off your opponent really fast unless you get a really good hand um, and really be able to go aggressive with Knight of the Ebon Legion and Gifted Aetherborns um, early on. Playing a lot of those, dumping them on the battlefield and just swinging, swinging, swinging in, and then playing like a Fatal Push or Thought Seize here and there just to kind of get rid of. Uh, things that might be problematic, but most of the time you're just trading resources until you have an, enough of an advantage or a card advantage or a creature advantage to be able to punch through and win the game. Uh, going through on tapped out, which I'd like, which I'd like to do, uh, this deck, sorry, press the wrong button, uh, this deck has a quite good curve here. Uh, from 1 mana, 2 mana, 3, 4, and then 5 mana. Uh, being, don't forget, 
the delvable card in Murder's Cut. So really, it only goes up to four drop. If you think about it, you're never really going to play Murder's Cut for five, or very, very rarely. Uh, nine mythics, thirty rares, fourteen uncommons in the main, with five rares, six uncommons, and four commons in the sideboard. Uh, very, like I said, cool deck to to play. It is more of an expensive deck, but it does play quite uh, quite strong cards, cards that are in the format uh, that you can utilize these cards for for a basis of other decks such as Saltite Delirium, uh, or you can you know add some extra cards here. Sometimes people play Raska, uh, the the new one from uh, Ravnica Allegiance in here uh, to get extra card advantage. Uh, so there's, there's different ways you can kind of go out. This is the way I went, uh, utilizing Death Touch creatures, discard outlets uh, for your opponent. So just to kind of get rid of anything that can be problematic against you. Most of the time, uh, you can just basically kill, kill anything on the board and get enough value to kind of get through um, and go for the win there. So that is the Death Card deck for you guys. Um, as always guys, uh, like and subscribe to the channel would be really great. Uh, share this if you can. Um, and as I always do, everything on the stack has resolved and good games everyone. G'day everyone, it's The Gatherer here. Thanks for checking out the channel. And if you live in Australia and love Magic the Gathering, then our affiliate Facebook group, Josh and Pat's MTG Bazaar, is the place to go to purchase awesome singles and seal product for bargain prices. It's a page where you can bid daily for the cards you need, or for the cards that you don't, but can't resist as the thrill of the hunt is too much to pass. Check them out in the link below.